my name is Dan. And welcome to another episode of Conversations with Dan and Josh. If you are new to our page, please subscribe, like, and share. You can also drop a comment. All right, now on our topic today, we are discussing how brands can remain relevant mm -hmm. over a long period of time. Exactly. And today is a little different, yeah? We decided to look at a case study. And our case study is... Uganda Warage. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, we would like to look at Uganda Warage and see what have they been able to do yeah. over that period of time. They've been around for a very, very long time. Uh, I think it's 1965. Yeah. Round about take. there. Yeah. Give or take. Yeah. And they're still relevant till this day. Yeah. So we'd like to see what have they been able to do, right? How have they been able to keep their audience? How have they been able to stay relevant and, and be consistent? Today. Exactly. Yeah. Today. So Josh, when was the first time? You heard about Uganda already. Had so, okay, I don't want to say drunk, but had or so. Yeah, I just make sure my parents don't see it. <laughs> so, like, anyway, uh, no. no, but subscribe. yeah, so yeah, of course, uh, Uganda already has been along the journey. So, really, from a kid, mm -hmm. not drinking, just seeing it <laughs> when you send to a show. Ideally, yes. Yeah. Then you don't buy it but yes so from you know as a child then of course i interacted with it at campus <laughs> <laughs> which at the right age yes yes 18 guys eh? 18 yes. and and uh, of course but uh, what got me struck actually and got my attention is um at about that time when i was leaving campus it started to transition to be more appealing to people my age yes uh, from the bottling to the flavors and all these things. And the campaign that was awesome, the billboards, mm -hmm, was the mm -hmm, Soyuji mm -hmm. campaign. Yeah, the Soyuji campaign. Which okay. kind of had a young kind of vibe, maybe a guy in a suit and then at a party. So it kind of appealed that we are young and funky, but we still bring the same vibe that we are known for from the 1960s. Yeah. So showing me that we still have the quality that we mm -hmm. are known for, yeah. but then you can join this journey as a hip and cool teenage or... I yeah, I think I, I think it's it's good to point out when they became what they are now. Yes. But then for those that have not been able to, for those that did not see what it was so what like it, before, yeah, yeah. If you have not, if the only bottle of Uganda Warage is the nice looking slender bottle you see, yeah. Then you need to look back at what they had yeah. when, back then when it was the brand for our fathers and our grandfathers. The plastic. Exactly. Yeah. They, were, they, were, they had that big, big, big glass thing yeah. that had curves at the top. Yeah. And then they had the tiny tote bags. Yes. Yeah, and they're all the colorless and just had the logo on it. And and, and, and that was it. Yeah, so it was the brand great. for our fathers. It was the brand for our grandfathers. And it was marketed as such. But then, as you said, around the time, I think it was 2017. 2017. Give or take, 2016, 2017, see, you know, around there. From around 2012, they were very intentional into starting to go with the trends. Yeah. Yeah, you know, the ads, the, the messaging, they tested a lot of involving the young community into the brand story. Mm -hmm. So by 2017, really, it was like unwrapping. Yeah. Unwrapping what they had yeah. come up So with. ideally, um, they, they, they looked at a new target audience. Yes. I think at that point, they realized, around 2012, they realized that a lot more young people had money to spend. Mm -hmm. you no, know, the ability to purchase had shifted yeah. from the older guys to the new people, yeah. to the younger people, sorry. And at the same time, the younger audience was more outgoing. Yes. Yeah. So how do you then appeal to these young people who have the money to spend? You attack their passion points. Yes. Find the place where they are and then segment yourself and be there where exactly. they are. I think they went with events. Yeah, they went with a lot of events, but even in the segmentation, you could see they were intentional about understanding mm -hmm. what a youth does. But yeah. then, where does Uganda Waraji fit in? So mm -hmm. the events were a great way because uh, you have uh, from the shows, you have these unknown uh, artists coming in, yeah. you have uh, events like blankets and wine, you have the intimate events which may be like pool parties and uh, you know, now we have the uh, listener parties and all those things. So they tapped into the outgoing kind of vibe, party, fun, hip, you know, so you can enjoy, you know, you can enjoy mm -hmm. Waraji at home at a friend's place, at a party, an, exactly, at an, an event. Yeah, yes. So it's, they kind of found how do we fit in mm -hmm. into the youth party life. So lifestyle really. Yeah. yeah. 
and and I, I, one other thing that around that time is they began to experiment. If 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 you remember, if you're old enough to remember, there's a time there was Uganda Waraji the premium. Yes. Then Uganda Waraji coffee. Yeah. And then Uganda Waraji cocoa, yeah. and they were training sachets. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Around that time, we realized that they started to experiment. You know, they started to experiment with new flavors. As yeah. uh, much as the premium brand was, was. still there yes. and was still being advertised and sold, they decided to try these new things and see uh, how do people respond to them. Yeah. And then, um, eventually, when they identified what worked, because for some reason, coffee disappeared. Yes. You know, UG coffee disappeared. Out of the blue, you know, cut off from supply, mm -hmm. and then they transitioned. Yeah, yeah. and... I, I, maybe because Coco sold more, okay. I like to think so. Probably, probably. Yeah, they mm. could open the book. Exactly. <laughs> if you, if you out there, um, tasted Uganda Waraji coffee, and and you liked it, let us know. Like, what did, what did you like about, about it? Coffee. Yeah, yeah, about that flavor. Yeah. Because um, I I don't know. It's different. Yeah. I know even the cocoa is different, yeah. but the blend. Yeah, the blend. What? But yeah, the blend of coffee. If you, hey, listen. If if you tasted it and you liked it. Probably let us know what did you like about it. Do you prefer it to any other brands that, uh, any other flavors of Uganda Waraji that are on the market? Yeah. Just let us know, and uh, yeah, it could deepen our thoughts process and our uh, discussion on this. Yeah. So yeah, I like the fact that they started to experiment. Then when they got got done experimenting and found what worked, they moved into repackaging. Yes, and you know, for a big brand that has been around for a very long time. It shows you the mentality they had. Yeah. This was very intentional. Yeah. They were looking to how do we shift and then be informed by demand, not assumption. Yes. So meaning don't get rid of a flavor that works. Yeah. Uh -huh. So meaning test, let the public tell you. And what does that tell you? From the sales. The sales are the pointers. You distribute everything mm -hmm. and you kind of see what is working. And when you introduce new flavors, how is the, the, the public perceiving or receiving these flavors. And you could see slowly they transitioned various flavors into the market, then went on to the branding and feel, and then the mm. bottle. So now the bottle is firm, it has those edges, you know, but then also the flavors have been amplified and appreciated by the market. Yeah. So it's not about how great the packaging is, but also the product is mm -hmm. amazing. So, yeah. Yeah, um, I like that bit about the uh, the, the bottle, yeah. which is which is great. I think that's the one thing that for me really stood out yeah. about this transition of Uganda Origin. Yeah. Previously, people would hold the Uganda Origin bottle, and you you do not feel proud about it. Yeah. yeah. But now with this new slender, nice looking uh, bottle, you feel yes. a lot more. You, you can carry Uganda Origin bottle from a bar or from a supermarket. Yes. In the open, yeah, right, no packaging, with right? No, no packaging, I just I still feel okay. It doesn't look strange, idiot. yeah, it doesn't, <laughs> doesn't look wow, idiot. <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, that yeah, one, it doesn't yeah, look idiot, yeah. but you still feel okay, you still feel proud yeah. of the fact that you're holding something that speaks to your heritage, speaks um, to, to who you are, yeah. which I think is another thing that they did. Um, when they said the transition, there was a hashtag so you G, so they basically just told everyone that. If you want this to be Ugandan, you. exactly. This is a drink. This is a thing. It's a yeah. drink for Ugandans. And then the next was, um, I think, was the vibe is on the inside. Yes. With Pastor Fomos had a very amazing ad. Yeah. It was colorful. It was. It was different. It, it, was it, it blended fitting. music yeah. and that young corporate, which was their target audience. And talking of music, they have they found uh, interesting ways to blend with the DJs campaign. Uh, mm -hmm. Then they had now a bunch of musicians come on board and do a lot of influencer campaigns with them. Mm -hmm. So then it became the renowned brand to partner with if you had a cool event yes. or music show. So that means now it didn't Uganda Warrior, you didn't have to buy into events. Events Boat. brought Uganda yeah, exactly. Warrior on board. So what does that mean? The events have the crowd. Uganda Waraji is where the crowd is. So uh -huh. many more people take it, more people enjoy it, more people identify with it, and eventually it still maintains and steps into the future. Which was a very, which was a no-brainer. Really. It, 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 yeah. it was a no-brainer. Yeah. Yeah, like, a support events, because you're telling people that if you want to have a good event, yeah. have a Uganda Waraji yeah. there. Which, which is just amazing. Yeah. It, they, they really went over and above with that. 
and um, and then I like the bit about how they've been consistent with their message. Yes. They've been consistent with what they do. So you yeah. G. So you G. Yeah. They, they emphasize that this is a Ugandan thing. Mm -hmm. You know, from the the, the look, the feel. To the, uh, to the test, to yeah. the ads, to the heritage, to the heritage. Yeah. Yeah, they still have the crested crane. The logo they had at the very beginning yeah. is what they have, which speaks again to their to, previous, yeah, to the start, uh, you know. to the start yeah. where they where they began, and um, also the fact that now they have diversified with different flavors. Yeah. So they have the premium that speaks to the older guys, the ones that enjoyed Uganda Waraji back in the day, yes. and then they have the new flavors as well. You know, the cocoa and um, pine. Pineapple, oh, I think. Pine, yes, that I one. Think that makes yes. So giving other options for the younger audience, the people who they're now targeting, because millennials love variety. Yeah, variety, variety is a spice of life. And you know, for even for the new age, it's, it it gives them an opportunity to not be a one fits all. Yeah. Yeah. So if you provide variety, then people are more open to trying out, out what you have. Yes. So yeah. it's, it builds anticipation mm -hmm. rather than oh, it's one thing. Yeah. I've tested it, we're done with that, let's move on. So mm -hmm. I think that's that's a great way. So I guess as we recap, you know, uh, yeah. some but of But I think before we recap, yeah. I think it's it's key to mention the fact that they maintained a good price. Huh. Despite the Point. change, despite right. the change yeah. of, of look and feel, they still maintain a price that people are willing to spend. Yes, right? I mean, it's, it's affordable, it looks great, it, it tastes great. great. And it represents who oh, we are as Ugandans. That was a great hack. So the price point was great for the new market they're stepping into. Yeah. From a young working youth to a corporate to even an older generation, all of them can afford a Uganda warrior. Yeah, yeah. Uganda warrior. And tap into that spirit. Yes. Which was just amazing. Yeah. So yeah, as you're saying, uh, just a quick recap. If uh, not just of Uganda warrior, but I think of all other brands, yeah. um, the brands that we speak to on this channel. Yeah. Uh, the, the individuals if, if if you have a brand if you have um a brand that you're building yeah. well that has been in existence how then do you pick from what you can know what you did and create relevance over time how do you keep your brand relevant and alive over a long period of time you can already has been here for over 50 years yes. which is a good example so how would we then pick from what they did to apply to brands that are happening that are existing today yeah so i think for the start is uh Identify your audience mm -hmm. and then segment it. Yeah. So they got the audience right, then they segmented so that they can identify where they can interact with the identified audience. Yeah. Yeah. So getting the audience is not good enough. You have to understand where your brand fits in. In the audience. Yeah. Yeah. And then after that, I think it's also very, very important that after identifying your audience, find them where they are. Yes. Yeah. What Uganda already did is they were going for younger people. They jumped onto social media. Yes. They jumped into events. Yeah. Because that's where the young people go to spend their money. Get the eyeballs. Exactly. Yeah. That's where they are. So meet your audience where it is. Yeah. If 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 they are if your brand uh pushes it is used experientially, uh it's used out there. Yeah. Sponsor events. Yeah. Uh be a part of all these activities that are happening out there. Uh just if 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 if, if your brand speaks to people uh, personally, find out where they're on social media and be there. And the other thing, the other learning which is also important is they tested. They tried new things so that they can find a new way to serve this audience yeah. and the best way to serve this audience. So them testing with flavors, trying out the, the shapes, the bottles, and doing these different things to have more people mm -hmm. give feedback about the actual products they were yeah. introducing. Yeah. Gave them facts to determining what is working. Yeah, so meaning market. keep on the market what actually is being bought more yeah. and take off. You take off what's not working. What's actually not exactly. working. So but they had proof and then they led with that. But the risk is they were open to actually test to testing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. that then they can come to a conclusion of what the people want. Exactly. Yeah. And I think uh, finally is be consistent. Yeah. You know, once you have found what works, if you found the formula that works, be consistent at it. Yeah. Continue um, what you're doing and where you need to tweak, tweak it, yes. but then consistently yes. do what you, what works. Exactly. Just like uh, you can know what you did and have them continue to be part of so many other events yes. each and every time. Yes. Uh, you do the same thing, pick from that, find what works and then be consistent with it. Be consistent with your message, your hashtags, your essence. Yes. 
because people need to feel you, you everywhere your story. they go. And then again, you repeat. Yeah. You again, repeat. segment your audience over time, mm -hmm. understand where they are, go to them, give yes. their attention, give them the variety, know what they want, mm -hmm. then maintain and be consistent. Yes. And just so I think that's a process that Uganda already has used over, over the time. years. Over over the fifty yeah. years that they've had. Over the years is always trying to understand what is my audience now, has it changed, has it mm -hmm. transitioned, how are they behaving, who has moved off the ship, who is still on, on yeah. the ship, how can we give them value so that yeah. they stay with us and then they remain consistent so they keep evolving with the trends mm -hmm. but keeping the SOUG vibe at the core. At the heart, yeah. So um, that is our thought on, on, on how brands can remain relevant over a large period of time. Um, our, our our reason for picking this case study was, it's one that we resonate with as as, as young people. Uh, we saw it back in the day, yes. and how we see it now is different. Yeah. So it's it, it 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 represents that that transition, that longevity. And um, if you have any um, comments with regards to what we just talked about, feel free to hit us up uh, in the comments. Uh, let us know what you think about it. Do you think um, Uganda RIG will be relevant? In the years to come, based off what they've been doing, do you yes. think they won't be relevant in the future or not? You know, let us know what you think. Um, so you can do that in our comments uh, under this video. Uh, but also, if you would like to reach out to us personally, uh, you can find us on social media. Uh, find me on Twitter. My handle is at the Dano Daka at Simbi Josh. And uh, you can hit us up uh, with conversations, with topics. Uh, also, reach out to us for our partnerships. And collaborations, uh, if you'd like to hear more from us, let us know. We can um, work something out. Yeah, so um, thank you for joining us on this episode. Thank you for listening and watching. Exactly. And uh, we hope to see you on the next one. Cheers. Bye.